Hello guys and welcome to Motor Beam. Welcome to the most cold weather you can experience in Mumbai because at one point it's raining and then it's sunny. Well, right now you can see I have got the most affordable hyper sport motorcycle that's available in India, the Suzuki Hayabusa. It's gotten super dirty, but still it looks attractive. My goodness. I cannot take this grin off my face because I have been riding this for the last two days. No, my goodness, this is so good. Well, there are quite a few things. I'm not going to review it to the detail, but there are different things where I cannot find details about, like how to use the launch control, what the cruise control does. There are quite a few things about how it rides in the traffic and all of that. So that's the thing that I'll cover in today's video. Before we begin, subscribe to Motor Beam and don't forget to hit the bell icon. The Busa's third generation update has been a massive change to it, but it looks quite similar to the predecessor. Well, it's over 20 years and the motorcycle still looks like it's a beast. It's a falcon and the design does not go wrong anywhere except for one part where there's so much bulk. If you notice, you've got a tiny handlebar, you've got a tiny frame going around, engine is massive and to cover that, the fairing is so bulky. To match that, they've made the rear bulky too. If you notice both front and rear, you've got 17 inch tires, 120 section front and 190 section tires. Those are the thickest size you can get, but they still look tiny. And look at this goddamn bazookas, yaar. These exhausts are so thick, they still look tiny on such a big motorcycle. There's one thing for sure which I'll definitely appreciate, is that it's got all around LEDs. But then the tail section used to look a little different, uh, not that attractive in pictures. On the top angle, you can't even see the tail light. But as soon as you sit down, oh my goodness, the lines are so nice. From the rider's perspective, the five-pole instrument cluster takes a lot of estate. But then the rest two, which are analog, stay separate. The center section, which is digital, oh my goodness, it has so much to offer. There was a time where there were no electronics on this motorcycle. It just had riding modes. Now it's got traction control, launch control, uh, engine braking, lift control, oh my goodness, lift control is basically wheel control and there's so much to it. It's even got a quick shifter that's bi-directional plus it's got two levels to that too. There is so much tech in this motorcycle now. Let me give you a quick glimpse on how things work around with the switch gear. Starting off with the right side, you've got an integrated start-stop button and that is the one that's used for launch control too. So right below it is the cruise control and right below that is the hazard light button. There are multiple buttons that do multiple jobs. On the left, you can see the mode button that you can switch between what you want to see on the meter. And then the up and down button can be used for cruise control, otherwise changing data on the meter. Well, there's so much tech and it is pretty easy to use. It's not as cumbersome as it was there in the Kawasaki's. The front suspension also looks adjustable and then there is a change to the ergonomics too. Let me hop on the motorcycle to give you a glimpse. This is just an 800mm of seat height and the seat is soft. It's very nice. Plus this one, the cowl is an accessory which Suzuki has given us so that we can experience the motorcycle solo. Hmm, my girlfriend is not and it will not make it. Okay? Ouch! I am on the motorcycle and it's quite wide but for the rider's perspective, it's not that wide that it is over here. You see the handlebars come to the edge and that how wide the body is itself. But then there is a thing that Suzuki has got the handlebar slightly closer to the rider so that you don't lean in too much. Problem is that uh, this is still too high. I am just 5 feet 6 inches and this is quite a lot tight for me. For anyone taller, it will get tighter and tighter. Problem? There is one. Once you turn the handlebar to the complete lock, your arms get locked over here. So I'll do that in a U10 test too, or maybe do a figure of it. Let's see all of those. The Hayabusa gets a total of three levels of launch control. All you gotta do is long press the starter button and that's about it, it'll engage itself. Level one is pretty calm because it'll keep everything in control and the RPM limits to four and a half thousand RPM just for the launch. Level 2 is a little bit crazy, goes up to 7,500 RPM. Level
level 3 is mad because it will go up to 9,500-10,000 rpm and then the bike will say, if you can control it, I'll try my best too. One might be a crazy person to filter through traffic like there's nobody's business. But for a slalom test, you can actually see that this motorcycle which weighs over 266 kgs does filter through the slalom without breaking a sweat. This motorcycle does feel a little heavy but the weight balance is very nice and this motorcycle filters nicely. The Busa has a very long wheelbase and just because of that taking a U-turn might seem a little difficult. Although there is a problem that once you take a complete U-turn, your hand touches the tank and that is because the handlebar has come closer to the rider. This might be a bit of a problem if you don't get used to it. The new Busa has got upgraded brakes as well with bigger discs. You've got Brembo Stylema calipers, so braking feedback has actually improved. Stopping from 60 to 0 is pretty dope, you can see that the bike is in control. Let's try it at 120. Damn, did you see? It does nosedive quite a bit, but the motorcycle stops without a fuss. In the slalom test, you could see that I was able to have a very good pace. But then what about in a figure of 8? Well, right now, I can feel that the motorcycle feels a lot more heavier. But then, the grip on the tyres is no problem at all. These Bridgestone S22 tyres grip really well. They do look a little tiny on the motorcycle, but the grip is really very nice. And you can also see that it takes quite a lot of estate because the wheelbase is quite long. And you can also see that a figure of weight is not as tight as it could be in a smaller motorcycle. The Hayabusa also gets a cruise control which is pretty dope. All you gotta do is press the button below the right starter switch and the cruise control setup will start. When you want to set to the particular speed, it has to be above 60 km per hour and then you can engage that by pressing the left set button. You can see there's plus and minus on the left switch gear with which you can increase or decrease the cruise control speed. To disengage cruise control, all you have to do is engage the clutch or press the brake. The final test, basically a feature which I like a lot is the hill hold. This feature is mostly seen in cars. And this time around, in a motorcycle, when you climb a slope and come to a halt, you have to be in gear, let go of the brake and this motorcycle will hold it. Well, it will hold for about 30 seconds and as soon as you just let go of the clutch or get into neutral or give it a throttle, it will start moving as and when. Now you saw this motorcycle is actually dynamically rich. The twin spar frame is just brilliant. But there's one more thing that's even better and that's the heart. This one. The 1340cc inline for motor is a beast and to be very honest I'll have to put it to neutral before I turn it on. so quickly and still sounds so smooth yeah the engine is mad it's mad 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 the 1340cc inline 4 motor takes a lot of estate and just because of that it's a lower compression engine compared to the leader class super bikes because even they produce 200 bhp this one does not produce even that it produces only close to 190 ps the torque is the same but then there is no problem at all because this motorcycle is so usable and the torque band is accessible right from 2000 rpm and all the way up to 8000 rpm the torque feels lively all around this motorcycle sure has a strong mid-range the low end is a little bit lacking but you can still do 60 km per hour in the 6th gear and won't have any problems at all what impresses me is the throttle response which changes according to the riding modes and there are 3 standard riding modes plus because of the electronics you've got 3 more customizable riding modes the C mode is basically CC mode Keep in control, it's very gradual, basically it's the rain mode. The B mode is basically the urban mode, where the throttle response is okay, it's very gentle comparatively, but then you've got full power all around. So if you open the throttle post 6000 RPM, it'll go guns blazing crazy like mad. And the best mode is the A mode, where it says F you in the face. 
because it goes mad right from the get go the low end is crisp the mid range is strong and the top end is mad bad 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 mad and this motorcycle does 140 km per hour in the first gear itself basically the top speed of a tracking car which is the Renault Quid is 140 this one does it in the first gear this motorcycle the Busa is just so aerodynamically sound that even if you ride it in the rain well Normally there's no wind blast and you can't feel the water on yourself too that easily. Suspension setup on the other hand is pliant on each and every kind of road. Good roads, bad roads. You saw me tipping into different kind of angles and it was not losing grip because of the good tyres too. In India basically there are two types of buyers for the Busa for Suzuki. Number one who want to fulfill their dream with the best superbike available in India. But then the second one are the content creators who make and show their lives all around the Busa. <laughs> no offense to them, they are doing a great job and so is the Busa. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, do hit the like button. I'll see you guys in the next one, probably. Bye bye. This motorcycle comes at a price of 18 and a half lakhs. It's completely worth it. Huh? I said thank you so much, bye bye. Lena hai, le lo, socho mat. Khatarra gaye. With a 20 litre fuel tank and riding it for the last two days i haven't got anything more than 12 kilometers per liter if you can afford that you can definitely afford the busa and if you can do much bye 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 bye